know that people have said that having a writer in the English department is like having an elephant in a zoology department. But I don't see it that way because the way I learned to write, you know, I learned less in college than I did with working with uh, editors and fixing my own work. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of the approach I take with students, too. You know, I say, if you want an A, I'll tell you how to do it. You know, they do the best they can, turn it in, and um, I'll make notes on them and they get a revision. Mm -hmm. So, so re revision is a, is a central component because mm -hmm. real writers do that, right? <laughs> oh, over and over and over. That's another reason some people who have talent will never be writers. They've got to, uh, got to revise. Mm -hmm. You know, say they they write poetry, and I'll say it like, uh, "Who's your favorite poet?" Oh, well, I don't read poetry. You know, or uh, or they write in. Kids are real involved these days in um, uh, fantasy, it, from Harry Potter and Twilight and all that stuff. And they get these books all written in their head before they've written down a word. They have their characters. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, that's dangerous, because if I talk to somebody about oh, what I'm doing too much, I'll lose my enthusiasm. I also have this theory about writer's block, which some of them hit. And basically, I don't believe in it. It's called writer depletion. Okay. And what I do when I feel that way is uh, I read. And if I'm too tired to read, I watch a movie. And if I'm too tired to watch a movie, I sleep, you know. But it, I don't panic anymore. I started out, uh, the, first, the first stories I published came out of working in a writing group. I was with the uh, attending the Sangman Writers back then. It was a Friday night event at, at Tim Osgood and Becky Bradway's house. And um, it helped me discipline myself, okay? When they were meeting every week, mm -hmm. and I was working on my first novel, uh, I had a chapter ready every week to workshop. They started meeting every other week, and I had a chapter every other week to workshop. And so it really helps with the discipline, you know, that you know you, you, you want to have something ready to take advantage of, of the a workshop. And there were some really great writers in there, um, and I, I got some pretty valuable stuff. I remember once Tim Osborne saying, it, and it was, it, it was with a, a story that was kind of big and cumbersome. And he said, you know, it's too bad you didn't have this happen before this. But that's the way you've got it. And I started thinking about it. And he was right. Mm -hmm. And I switched him around. It was beautiful. So I know, too, you, you said that you've done writing workshops with Ursula Le Guin and some other mm -hmm. writers. Can you talk about some of those experiences? The Ursula Le Guin was, I mean, I couldn't believe it. You apply to this workshop. It was in uh, Oregon, up in the Cascade Mountains, and uh, I only, when I saw the list of people who were giving workshops, I saw Earth Le Guin, and that's the one I applied for, and I sent a little story, and you know, there were women from all over the country and all over Canada that applied to get in, and I got in, a class of about six women. Well, with Ursula Le Guin, we studied the first chapter, How to Start a Novel, mm -hmm. and we looked at Bleak House and, and a bunch of other first chapters mm -hmm. as, as different styles. Okay, I personally don't think Dickens uh, could get published today with uh, the first chapter or the first page of Bleak House mm -hmm. um, because Kit, people go into a bookstore and they find a cover that they like the color. They pull it off the shelf, maybe read the blurbs on the back, maybe open it up and read the first sentence, but if that first sentence doesn't get them, mm -hmm. they put it back, you know. Um, and, you know, academic readers are just, there are just too few of them mm -hmm. to, um, no, I don't think, I don't think a publisher would have taken a chance on Bleak House. You know, and it's, it's hard for me to know, um, in so, some cases, what's good and what's not. Mm -hmm. And so I have a lot of faith in writers' groups. Okay. 
I mean, nobody's ever said that's a piece of crap, just throw it away. Yeah. But uh, they helped me with what to do for it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, gen more often, I think it's not good, and it turns out that with a few changes, it is good. Okay. I knew a story that you just, you just got the Ring Carver mm -hmm. going for. Can you talk about that story and about that award and the process of like applying? And stuff? <clears throat> it was real easy, uh, and it's getting easier to submit things, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, because I did it over the internet. I submitted it uh, and I paid the entry fee, which was 10 bucks, and um, submitted it over the internet. The story had been something I had worked every winter. You know, I just try to write a story and, and send it to a few of those contests. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was a story I wrote for that. It's about these two women who live together, and they're they're like um, in their fifties or so, and what and and they make this kind of death pact that if one gets sick, the other one will not let her suffer. Okay, and then the one gets cancer, and so that's kind of the setup of it. With, with writing, I mean, you have to really love it, and I've, I've been good at it, you know, from eighth grade on, you know. I mean, nobody could argue with, you know, the quality of my sentences in eighth grade. Mm -hmm. It was just that it wasn't social sciences. Um, so, you know, we tend to, you know, drift toward things we're good at, mm -hmm. and I just had a little natural talent, which is not enough to be a writer, mm -hmm. um, but I, I work at it because it gives me pleasure.